there's some big news that we need to announce. Yeah, this is I kind think, of big news. I think maybe it's in the fridge. It's kind of unexpected news. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've talked a lot today about the history of Louisville and uh, kind of the historical significance of Louisville as a beer city. A lot of, along with that goes the uh, namesake of our podcast, the Kentucky Common Beer Style. Um, we think it's a great beer, obviously. We think that the story behind it uh, deserves more recognition. And it turns out um, we're not alone. And all of our talking about it is not falling on deaf ears. Uh, we kind of ha- have had some s- under the radar. We haven't really been allowed. We all had to sign a few things not to reveal too many details. But I think we're okay to talk about it as of today. Yeah. Uh, AB InBev, Anheuser-Busch, uh, Budweiser, as you may know them, is launching nationwide uh, their very own Kentucky Common. So they're leaning into the style. Uh, they really like the history. And um, we've kind of entered into a marketing deal with them to help promote it, to kind of help produce uh, you know, knowledge and information to help the public learn about it. And we actually have a couple of them in the fridge. If you guys want to try AB InBev's Kentucky Common. I'm into that, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And while you prepare those two and beers. And I'm going to judge harshly. Yeah. I, I, for one, am <laughs> shocked. Yeah. While you prepare those two beers, I, they, they did give us a, a copy of the press release that they uh, that they just sent out. Um, starts off with a, a, with a great tagline, by the way. Uh, the king of beers is now the king of commons. Great. I, yeah. I love That's that. That's pretty so much. cool. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis based Anheuser Busch has decided to announce the launch of its new Budweiser Kentucky Common Thanks, Beer. Sir. This beer style has deep roots in American brewing history and is a unique and flavorful addition to the Anheuser Busch portfolio. Consumers can expect to see 30 can cases and six packs of the new dark cream ale hit shelves and show up on draft at their favorite bar later this month. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, as they say in the press release, St. Louis, Missouri and Louisville, Kentucky share a long and intertwined history when it comes to brewing. St. Louis is the home of Anheuser-Busch, the largest beer producer in the United States, and has been a hub of brewing activity for over 150 years. Meanwhile, Louisville has a rich pre-prohibition brewing history with its own distinct beer styles and traditions. By creating Budweiser Kentucky Common, Anheuser-Busch is celebrating the shared brewing heritage of these two cities and bringing unique and delicious beer style to beer lovers across the country. Yeah. Uh, I'm really personally the excited great about American this. Common. It says on the label. Yeah, we'll, I'll, uh, so I'll put a picture prototypes? of the logo up. On, yeah, this is like their um, internal testing. They just sent us some of their like R and D batch, I guess. So this is probably a little bit different in terms of marketing and branding than what'll go into the can. Uh, but yeah, I'll put the logo up on the screen for people watching. You so, might notice the reminiscence to the podcast logo. Uh, that's that's part of our marketing deal with yeah. them. So. Um, this is the famous Kentucky Common. We know of no other American beer that inherits so much history as the common style. Our exclusive pitch barrel age uh, aging produces a taste so smooth and drinkable you will find in no beer at any place. Uh, so kudos to uh, Anheuser-Busch for creating this style that we've yeah. been advocating for so long. Um, I, let's go ahead and drink this right yeah, now. Yeah, cheers, guys. Is, been, all, 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 mission accomplished, I think. Mission cheers. accomplished. I think as far as the common cool mission thing. goes, yeah. this will be a great... I can't believe it. I can't and now, believe if only uh, the state of Kentucky would name it the state beer style before a- AB InBev gets all of the, like, the yeah. cred for making it you know, yeah. a thing. And it's in long necks. Yeah, and it's in long necks. They, I think they're going to do it in long necks, 12 ounces. <laughs> they might do it in some tall boys that have some like vintage retro yeah, branding on maybe it. Maybe some 19 twos. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's definitely better than regular Budweiser. Definitely. Yeah, on, yeah. Honestly, this is a this is a good beer. I'm, you can taste I'm it. It's corn instead of rice in there. I know they'd use the actual like authentic Kentucky Common recipe. A little bit of dark malt. Yeah. Um, it's not sour. That's the nice thing. Yeah, yeah not sour. Oh God. I'm Although pretty- we did have a very long conversation with their um, with their their uh, recipe development team about the pitch barrel aging. That's something that we insisted that they do because they are always like uh, touting the beechwood finish on the regular Budweiser. They want to do that with this, but it's like if you really want to do it authentically, it has to be aged in uh, pitch lined pine barrels. So we had to find a Cooper that was willing to do that. It was a whole big thing. Um, but, you know, I think this is going to be a great way to kind of introduce regular Budweiser drinkers to a little bit more beer history. So if you want to learn a little bit about more history, you can scroll back uh, probably a couple episodes. And we do have a whole entire panel uploaded of yeah. the history of the Kentucky Common. Yeah. Or pick up uh, Kevin's book. Yeah, that's, um, it. that's There's too. a whole chapter. If, if you can read, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and and in some uh, personal news relating to this, David, if you'd like to share that that part. 
mergers and acquisitions. Oh, can we say that yet? Yeah, well, I think we, we're we not allowed to talk about dollar amount. I we think, can yeah, talk let's about, just go ahead and break it here. Can yeah, I have a uh, job? Well, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we can't afford at least one employee. Um, <laughs> but uh, due to this deal, we have been acquired by uh, well, one AB InBev. So we're, we're fucking sellouts, guys. Yeah. Um, we did not take that right, decision lightly either. It's like, you know. So I'm not disappointed in you. You, you all. You. So there, there's been a lot of conversation around Anheuser Busch and AB InBev over the years, and I I understand it. However, uh, this is a completely different situation. We're not a brewery. Yeah. We're, we're an ale trail. We're a podcast. Uh, so uh, part of the deal was, you know, in order for us to advance this style of beer that we. That is so historically tie, tied to our stake and state and our heritage. Yeah, um, this was part of the deal. They want they want a part of this, and and I don't blame them. And I'm happy to be a part of that. Uh, we've been able to be uh, kind of consultants along the way on the style. So to me, it's a win win. We'll still be around. We we still plan on hosting this podcast. Yeah, nothing should really no, change. nothing's changing at all. <laughs> I'm going to drive a Ferrari. <laughs> we just want, we might be in nicer cars. All yeah. right, Dave, Dave is really excited about the dollar amount. I don't blame him. It's kind of life changing, but. Also, nothing's going to change. We're still going to be the same three schlubs that you see hanging out a mile wide. You know, like we're just walking in like, hey, yeah, like, give me a Paris Town Light. Like we will still be drinking. Or maybe they'll put a Kentucky comment on tap and we'll drink and, that. And there. like I said, I'm happy to sell you these hot sauces. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's franchise that's, too. that's yeah. what you said. But anyway, we wanted you guys to hear it here first. Um, so I guess starting maybe April 1st, it should start appearing on shelves uh, slowly but surely making its way into the market. I know Louisville is going to be one of the first target markets. Uh, I know they're going to work really aggressively to get some, you know, uh, space and all like the retail shelves. You say they, it's we. We, yeah. We, yeah. We, we're we're, we're kind of like, I mean, it's part of our, our baby now. So. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and it's again, we've we've criticized other breweries for working with AB InBev, but again, like. We're not a brewery. So. And, it, you know, AB InBev has helped all these, like, look how, look how much better Goose Island is now than it was before they bought it. Look how much better Wicked Weed is now. Yeah, than uh, it was before they and, acquired it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. been good, and you know there there may have been some news about a specific Ohio brewery recently. Just mm-hmm. don't even worry about that. Like we're not even, we're not a brewery. That's not going to happen to us. We're we're an ale trail. We're a podcast. Uh, so thank you again, Anna Heiser Bush. We appreciate your your patronage, uh, and let's get the Kentucky Common known nationwide. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 